So Mrs. Sonnenberg had long, straight, almost white hair that went down in the middle of her, of her back, and she was not unrat-like. She was the <laughs> she was the vice principal of my high school, and uh, when I was in grade eleven, I saw Mrs. Sonnenberg all the time. I saw her because I got elected as our school's president. I don't know, I never knew why we didn't have a prime minister. It just, I guess it sounded like less, like you wanted to have more power, you wanted to be president. Oh, he's the prime minister. Oh, who cares, where's the president, you know? <laughs> and it's not, it's not prime minister's choice, coffee that she drink. And so, <laughs> one year earlier, I was going through my bad phase. I was 15. And my brother, Corey, is, um, is criminally minded. Always and forever, he still is to this day. I'm not gone to jail, which is probably why he's very good, criminal mind. And my brother had a problem with authority. And because I was going th through my bad phase, I was always uh, up for some fun. And so one day, my brother, he came over to me and he's like, hey Steve, you know that dance that's coming up? The high school dance? I said, yeah, I know it's coming up. He's like, I made some dance tickets. I got the same paper, and I put like fake stamps on it, and uh, I have all these dance tickets, but I've already sold them to, none of my friends wanna go. They're all like trench coat wearing people, and they didn't <laughs> go. They, they, I don't know what they did actually. They drove around a lot. And so he gave them to me as his uh, go-between, and so a dance ticket in those days were six bucks. And so I decided to sell them for five, which was a better deal for the consumer <laughs> and a great deal for me because I didn't pay anything. And so we sold tons of tickets. I would say the school of Simcoe Composite High School was about 1,100 students, maybe 1,000. And it was the school in the middle of Southern Ontario where all the other schools were a lot smaller than that school. Some, pe some people came to the bigger school. So we had a, about a thousand people, give or take. And I, I reckon I sold about 100 tickets? No, 75. Let's say 75 to 100, because that could have been the actual number. I had to cut my brother in for everything I sold. I didn't get all the money. And so as I was selling tickets, I, felt, I was feeling pretty good about myself because we were making all this money. and. I just had to say, hey, do you want a, a dollar off a ticket? You want one? Uh, here you go. And like, oh, sure, I'll take one. No one asked, no one batted an eyelash. Until Devin Rufinak came up to me. Now, Devin Rufinak asked me for a ticket. Uh, he's like, how much? I said, $5. And he's like, I don't, I don't want to pay $5. And I said, well, you kind of have to. If you can pay six if you really want to. And go over to that table over yonder and pick up a ticket for six bucks. He's like, I'll tell Mrs. Sonnenberg if you don't give me a ticket. So I got a little bit mad, but what could I do? He was holding all the cards and I gave him a ticket. And it wasn't until about three or four hours later, maybe an hour and a half before the dance was due to open, when I got a phone call. I didn't get the phone call. My father got the phone call from Mrs. Sonnenberg. And, uh, it was, it was kind of like this, it was like, hello? Yeah, he's here. Who? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I couldn't hear the breathing into the phone, but I know Mrs. Sonnenberg could have. And then he put the phone down real slow. And my dad had a hot head, and so when he was super quiet, <laughs> he knew is like he was really, really, really mad, and he's like, "You got to go into the school." And uh, I went in. He drove me in, and uh, Mrs. Sonnenberg said, "Did you sell some dance tickets?" I said, "Yeah, I did. I did it." Uh, Were you the only one that did it? My dad was there. Were you the only one who did it? I'm like, "Yep. It was just, just me, just me." How many did you sell? Uh, uh, Twenty-five or so. Twenty-six, I think. And, uh, okay, how much were you selling it for? Four bucks.
discount. So uh, she's like, okay, do you have the money? I have it all right here. I counted it here. Here you go. I'm really sorry. And I found out later that it was Devin Rufinak that did this. It turned me in. And I wondered why. And I thought about why, why, why. And being like a big kid in high school, no one ever really picked on you. And, I, and that meant like I was never really the bully either. Why would I have to be the bully? I was, no one bugged me. So I didn't have to do anything. I just kind of roamed the, the hallways free. <laughs> no problem. Except one day, I, I went into English class and we were doing um, Romeo and Juliet. And so our teacher, Mr. Allgood, he allowed us to do like a video of our presentation. So we did our videos and Devin Rufinak and his group did a video and uh, they did a commercial in between the scenes. And the commercial, uh, there was a commercial back when for Bugle Boy jeans. Do you guys remember, anybody old enough to remember Bugle Boy jeans? Here's how the, here's how the commercial went. A beautiful woman comes up to some dude and she says, are those Bugle Boy jeans you're wearing? And the guy is like, why yes they are. And she's into him some because the jeans are great, I guess. And so that's what makes you buy the jeans. So they decided to do a satire of this Bugle Boy jeans car er, commercial. And now Tara Smith is still to this day gorgeous. She always was, always will be, I think. And, uh, and she was in the commercial as well. Devin Rufinak was kind of a sickly little tiny kid. And uh, he decided, I don't know why, Devin Rufinak decided that he was going to do the Bugle Boy. He probably was just wanted to get close to Tara. And so he did it without a shirt on, <laughs> this kid. And Tara came up to him. If he, if he was like this, he's like, are those Bugle Boy jeans you're wearing? And then down his stomach, he ru she rubs. And for any straight person, I think, no, wait, straight men, or a gay woman would be like really turned on by Tara Smith touching you in a slow manner like that. And so when the camera panned down, it went to poor little 15-year-old Devin Rufinax bugle boy jeans. <laughs> Mr. Allgood, for some reason, was out of the class. Leaving to devious mind Steve was like, this is the best thing, I've, this is before like internet porn and stuff. And so we were like, oh my God, oh my God. So I have the remote that's actually on a wire connected to the TV and I pause it and I rewound it and pause it in slow motion and poor De I put Devin Rufin out. He was humiliated beyond, could you imagine having your little boner on like display for the entire English class to see in slow motion over and over again? <laughs> So I, I, I deserved <laughs> Devin Rufinak's wrath. And Mrs. Sonnenberg said, you're never allowed to come to school dances. And she kind of didn't say anything after that. And I'm like, this, this week, next month? She's like, no, ever. We don't want you back. You can never come to a school dance ever again. So I was banned at 15 years old in grade 10 from ever going to the school dance again and I saw like all the sexlessness that was gonna happen to me afterwards and luckily uh, uh, I <laughs> it, <wait. laughs> um, I kinda wanna stop there <laughs> thank you